Hi, and welcome back to Fall Broadcast Week 5. We're your hosts, Ranger Madison. And I'm Ranger Claire. I'm standing in for Ranger Alyssa this week. Our condolences go out to Allie and her family on the death of her grandmother. Mm -hmm. Our broadcast comes out every Thursday at 2 p.m. It'll be on our Facebook, YouTube, and if you miss it, we'll also post it on our website. This week, we have some tips for visiting, as well as our peak check. And Ranger Dawn talked with Peace Our Razor, Ranger Joanna. So, week five, peak check. Um, if you look around us, you'll see a little bit of color coming through. We had lots of rain and fog over the weekend, so if you opted out, you didn't miss anything, it's still happening very, very gradually. Um, on the forest floor, there's a mosaic of beautiful yellow leaves. Don't forget, they can be very slick. So we wanna watch out for those on the wet roads as well as on the wet trails. In terms of other color, we're still seeing some reds here and there. You know, when you look across the landscape, you're starting to see just sort of a muted texture as those other colors start to come in. But we've got a long way to go so it's not peak yet um, so plan your trip soon and um, we're looking for that colder temperature which we're not getting yet this last week has been pretty still pretty warm and humid so coming up this week we've got really warm temps at the beginning of the week however next weekend that's what we're looking for lows in the low 40s maybe even 30s up here on the mountain so if once we get that that cold snap that should inspire the color. So I think we've got a ways to go. It's still gorgeous, don't get us mm -hmm. wrong. There's lots to see, there's color everywhere, but, it, but, but the landscape is still mostly green. We'd like to remind you guys again to remember to use the website. There's a lot of really good yep. information there and it could probably answer a lot of your questions that you have this time of year. Mm -hmm. uh, as you can imagine, we get so many calls asking about fall and the fall color progression. So check out our website. I highly recommend it as a great resource and also download our app and get the offline content. It's a great resource to have for you here while you're in the park. We'd also like to remind you guys again to utilize your digital pass, get it online at recreation.gov. And it's just a great way for you to get into the park a little bit faster and start your adventure sooner. And while you're online, don't forget to check our webcams on our website. Um, that's a great way to monitor the color change yourself. Mm -hmm. Clara, let's talk about fires. Let's talk about fire. <laughs> so it's important to know that fires are prohibited everywhere except in a designated area. So we have these nice already designated fire pits and that's a safe way for you to enjoy a campfire while you're here in the park. You can't just make a fire ring anywhere. It's not safe. And make sure after your fire that is completely extinguished. If yes. you have a fire in the picnic area or at your campsite, you need to get that completely extinguished before you leave. And our final tip for today is planning, planning those mm -hmm. hikes. Um, the, the app, as you mentioned, is a great place to do some hike planning, as is our website. We have lots of different um, categories of hikes so that you can avoid crowds, find hikes you haven't done before, but most importantly, find hikes that are suitable for you. Mm -hmm. um, make sure that a hike has the right elevation change, the right mileage for your fitness level. Another thing that we, we want to mention is is day, daylight. You know, it's getting dark before yeah. seven o'clock now. So plan that hike. How long is your hike going to take? You don't want to be setting off on a nine mile hike at three o'clock in the afternoon. You want to mm -hmm. make sure that you're planning for that darkness to hit about seven o'clock. We just um, cannot stress enough how important it is to, to plan for a safe experience. Mm -hmm. Here are a couple of your guys' photos from Flickr this week. If you've missed it, we've been asking you guys to send us our photos at flickr.com slash group slash shenfall. So if you'd like to be featured in our next fall broadcast, please send them our way. Uh, we'd love to see your photos of the fall colors and please include the date and the location. Our special guest this week is one of our preventative search and rescue rangers. Uh, Ranger Dawn caught up with her over at Old Rag earlier in the week and they talked all things hiking. So give it a listen. When you have to be on camera with your boss. <laughs> just so intimidating. Okay. Welcome to Old Rag Mountain. I'm Ranger Dawn 
here with the PSAR Ranger, which is preventative search and rescue. And she has tips for us about how we can all stay safe while we're out here in the park. Joanna Leach, your job sounds amazing. It is, I love my job. I love being outside. I love, I love when people come to the park and get to really enjoy it and have a good time. Obviously we don't want incidents to happen, but they do and I'm, we're just here to help. How do, will I encounter PSAR? Um, a lot of times you'll encounter us at the trailheads. You might see us out on trail, uh, at intersections of certain hikes where people could get lost. You also will probably see us if there's ever an incident in the park where someone does need help off the trail. Who is involved in coordination? So it's not just us, it's um, a lot of our law enforcement rangers are really highly trained medically and in the higher tech rescue skills. People who work in fees, wildlife, backcountry, trails, interp rangers, volunteers, the Potomac Appalachian Trail Club, the Old Rag Mountain Stewards, volunteer EMS personnel, the Shenandoah Mountain Rescue Group. It's a huge team effort. Um, it's a lot of people helping sometimes to get to get someone off the trail if it's needed. Mm -hmm. And that's a, a lot of resources that get pulled in. Yeah, so a lot of times if you're going on a hike and you're not as prepared or you're making risky decisions, think about if you happen to get hurt, all of those resources that are getting pulled to help you get off the trail. And that's a lot of people that you're putting at risk as well. They might feel the peer pressure from their friends to go do a 10 mile hike or a longer hike. So not knowing what your own limitations are can be risky, not just to yourself, but others around you. It's okay to turn around. If you started a hike and you realize that you're already out of water, there's no shame in turning around and just saying like, hey, I might try this a different day or a different time when I'm more prepared for this hike. What are some things visitors can do to be responsible for their own safety? Um, definitely being prepared is the number one thing. Um, packing those 10 essentials, including things like water, food, a first aid kit, layers, a flashlight or headlamp is very useful. Um, and then also emergency medications. What are some things they need to, to be cautious of during the fall? Um, in the fall, the biggest thing that you're going to encounter is crowds. Last Saturday, they hit 836 people here. That's a lot of folks on just this trail itself. Some other hazards that you might encounter in the fall are leaves that cover rocks, slippery rocks because we're getting more rain, stream crossings will get higher, and then also the sun goes down a lot earlier. How much should I rely on my cell phone when I come out here to keep me safe? Please don't use your cell phone as a flashlight. They run out of battery and they're not as strong as you might need in the backcountry. Your cell phone is not a survival kit. It's not going to give you water or food. There's no Uber Eats out here. <laughs> thank you so much yeah, for being on the thank show. It's you. been a pleasure talking to you. <laughs> Thanks for interviewing me and taking the time. I really appreciate it and stay safe out there, guys. <laughs> Please do. And thank you all for watching. Um, we'll see you again next week. Great job.